So, Professor Stefan Bodis, uh, for me, something very, very interesting because when I began going to some of these hypersemia meetings, uh, I listened to him and I think he's a very important person in the field of radiotherapy, in the field of hypersemia, and his knowledge is really, really, and research is really interesting. So, he comes from Switzerland. You, most of you, uh, you know him, and he's going. His topic is about integrating local regional hyperthermia into the current oncology practice, uh, a SWOT and those analysis. So, good morning, Professor Stefan Bodis, and we are happy to hear you. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Thank you also for the kind words. Thank you also for these very sensitive words in these difficult times. I would like first to congratulate all of you. Could you please mute the micros? All of you who are present, at the extra effort of the organizers, the extra effort of you, Elizabeth, and your team, for the presenters, and for all of us who are ongoing to do the best of possible treatment to our patients and therefore continue with our research. Maybe a very small remark for the special times. You know that every pandemia has a deep and lasting impact on society, so on all of us. And it's up to us if this impact will be positive or negative. This is what I believe. So the talk has been slightly reshaped also in respect of these times to focus, focus, focus on what is necessary because time is short and exchange of your thoughts is probably much more important than additional slides. There will be three parts. First, the emphasis to better communicate, to better network, to make our voice better heard in the multidisciplinary oncology field, but also in the field of healthcare. The second will be high level evidence of our scientific work is more important than ever. And the third is act, act, act. And I give you some examples of what we try to do. Next slide. So one strong partner is enough to strengthen oncologic hypothermia thermotherapy in your network, in your community. We don't need a lot of bystanders. But choose this partner wisely and choose him for a long lasting cooperation. I think that's key. Next slide. So what we tried in Switzerland is to try to stimulate debates. We tried in our um, hypothermic community not just to present papers with scientific evidence, but stimulate discussion, emotional discussion, controversial discussions. And what we did a few weeks ago is that we had outstanding experts from the field of technology and biology who gave their focus and making their point. So Niels Kuster is a professor, full professor at ETH Zurich. He strengthened that the future of oncologic um, thermotherapy is on technology. Next slide. And based on his um, CV, he had a broad um, range of expertise, which was helpful to show how visionary our field could move on within the next five to 10 years. And he made the focus that it's technology, technology, technology. Next slide. Then we had John Burris, probably well known to you. He was past president of ESTRO. And he made a focus that the future in oncologic thermotherapy to really move the field on for better patient care is biology. Next slide. And this is briefly his summary. So he has also broad expertise in clinical radiation oncology, multidisciplinary oncology and molecular biology in this field. And he was able to make the point. And at the end, I think we had a very lively debate, emotional, but peaceful. And we, we, we found that focus is needed, but ultimately with good focus, you can join forces in probably the best synergetic way. Next slide. So this is just to make the point for um, how we could network, how we should focus for the future. Then we go to scientific facts. Here I, I would like to thank um, Professor Niloy Data. Niloy, he's here. He joined us from Delhi. I'm very happy that you're on board, Niloy. And I would also like to thank Gerard van Roon and the co-authors who contributed to this paper. Very briefly, what Niloy and our team tried here is to bundle the strength, the opportunities of thermotherapy, of hypothermia, and the weakness and the threats. Identify them and look how you can bundle 
the positive things like strengths and opportunities for a maximal benefit, but also be aware what the weaknesses and the threats are and probably be proactive, tackle them where needed. Next slide. So if you look at the strength of hypothermia, the tumor selective multifaceted modalities, the individualized hypothermia treatment for superficial and deep seated tumors, the online and non-invasive thermometry and improved outcomes now supported by clinical trials and recent meta-analysis. These are four identified strengths. And one I would like to present here with images is the heating te technology for all body locations. We have them, we have the technology and we can improve. And they, I think hypothermia can move forward so that we become a timely um, oncologic facility well embedded within the key disciplines of oncology for future patient care. Next slide. So for the clinical evidence, I think it's important to, to see that almost 30 positive randomized trials are published now for radiotherapy or chemotherapy with and without hypothermia. And this is high level evidence. And if you compare this, you know, with, for example, pharmaceutical companies introducing novel drugs in the treatment for palliative or oncologic curative patient care, this is a lot. This is a weight which we need to communicate better, that we have a track record, we have solid evidence, even on the level one evidence with bundled um, analysis of the key trials within a meta-analysis concept. Next slide. What is important to see that all these trials, they can be in our standard of care for, for the moment recurrent solid adult tumors in several European and Japanese, um, in several European countries and in Japan. But what is also important to know that we do not add morbidity to our research with hypothermia, that within these trials, there are no relevant increase, especially of long-term side effects grade two, three, and four. And there you have to look a long way down the road to identify any pharmaceutical compound who has a similar non-toxic effect on patients. Next slide. Next slide, I can just move on one more. So if you see now, with all this evidence, what we see is that radiotherapy and hypothermia sometimes added with a chemotherapeutic agent and in the future probably with other small molecules or Im immunomodulatory agents. They can be in our regular care in some countries within Europe and also I think in Japan. And this is important because it's a starting signal. We cannot aim, you know, to make hypothermia now mandatory for the majority of adult cancers for almost all indications. We have to start focused for niche indications and then brighten up these indications based on our outcome. And I think we are on a very good track here. But it's also important to know that two years ago, the German sarcoma cancer centers must now provide access to hypothermia. And so sometimes we even see, you know, patients from German centers, which are referred to Swiss hypothermia centers, because um, there is a need to treat them close to home and maybe some of the hypothermia facilities are loaded in Germany with their patient. I think that's an important step also to um, improve and to visualize hypothermia in a better way. Next slide. So if you see now that the clinical trials are here, you know, you hear these voices, you know these voices, they criticize the outcome, they criticize the methodology, they criticize the patient focus or some other aspects of a single publication. So I think what was, was very important is what Niloy Datta did with the help of a expert statistical team. He, for the first time to my knowledge, made a systematic review of all available published trials in cervix cancer and locally advanced cervix cancer and looked at them for specific endpoints and try to understand if by accumulating all these data together, we can strengthen the message that we do something good to our patient and weaken the message that it's nonsense and non-evidence-based. And I think based on the visibility of this paper, which was published quite prominently in the Red Journal and discussed widely, I think this was a very important impact 
and it might be followed up by other similar papers in the near future. Next. Next slide. So to the opportunities, these are now things which we should seriously discuss and face. Um, I think we could improve still our networks. We have it and what we see here today is something um, very important signal that despite all the threats and challenges we have today in our daily patient care, in our daily life, we meet. And I think this is quite important and we should meet in an open way with open doors and communicate, cross-communicate the best possible way. And there were also in other parts of Europe, you know, rather closed circles and they try to open now. And one of these um, signals was that Escho and the Atzelsberg circle in Germany, they joined forces now. We had a kickoff meeting in Amsterdam and we were presenting to each other all running and planned clinical trials, including hypothermia in oncologic um, uh, settings. And I think this was a very lively discussion, a very emotional um, meeting. And at the end, we tried to rank the trials according to the interest of the participants. And we came up with three groups that we could evaluate some of the trials to become um, um, multi-centric, um, international. We could look at running trials and just join in, or we could make initiatives, create initiatives, and de novo start multi-centric um, European trials with no in interest from five to 10 um, interested centers providing hypothermia. So this was a starting signal. And of course, it was a little bit paralyzed or delayed due to the COVID pandemic, but we hope that this momentum will go on. Next slide. So I think also technology is a great opportunity. It's not only um, MRI um, integration, it's a lot of other technology tools. You know, we are highly developed um, centers. We have excellent partners in industry. And I think we could push technology much better to be integrated in our daily workflow of patient care, including hypothermia. And this might be worthwhile, a special effort, maybe also a retreat or a think tank to look how existing technology could be integrated and how novel technology could be pushed for improving our patient care with thermotherapy for oncologic patient care. Next. So important is also to show the weaknesses and the threats. And one is the reimbursement um, of hypothermia. We still have a problem of relatively low level of reimbursement and this can and should be improved. And I think um, by just cross information from every country, we could learn where we struggle, where we find acceptance within the oncology community and where we find acceptance within the healthcare politicians. And by learning from the national struggles, we could probably improve our strategy to push this um, joint with joint forces, at least within Europe. Next. So to summarize this part, I think we have good evidence from recently closed phase three trials to confirm the potential of hypothermia we have now new multicentric international phase three trials, and they are mandatory to keep up the momentum. The reimbursement of hypothermia is a challenge. We can face this challenge and we can improve. And innovation, I think, is the key on all levels for all healthcare professionals involved in hypothermia, for all of us involved in patient care. And quality assurance is the key. Without quality assurance, no way. Next slide. So here I would like to update it a little bit on some activities because I told you the important thing is at least uh, for this meeting and in these very special times, we have to act, act, act to have our voices heard. The priorities of healthcare are different and we have to see that our priorities in hypothermia are not paralyzed and keep up the momentum. Next slide. So as you probably know already in Switzerland, um, Switzerland threatened to close all reimbursement for hypothermia. And there was a deal um, made with us that one single indication could continue to be reimbursed for chest wall recurrence in breast cancer patients. 
The other um, option for us given to us was that you have to submit the full um, paper, 500, 600 pages, um, proving that hypothermia is evidence-based, it's efficient, it's economically of value, and it adds to the benefit of patient. And so with the help of Neloid Data and others, we did this effort, we submitted this um, project, and we were granted um, indefinite acceptance of um, four, five indications for superficial hypothermia and time-limited indications for seven indications in deep hypothermia. The final decision for deep hypothermia will be made end of this year. So I have three slides to go. Next one. What we did also, because we found it and our colleagues that they always say, what is hypothermia? This is wellness. Um, you just, you know, do what you think is fine. And there is a lack of level of quality compared to all other standardized oncology care. So what we did, we ISO certified our hypothermia unit. We think it's one of the first maybe in Europe. This was a long effort. I would like to congratulate and thank our hypothermia team for this effort. And with this ISO certification, at least hospital administration suddenly was much more interested because they had something they know and they can compare it with others. Next. So the activities within the network structures, just briefly to mention the workshop, you all know of this. Then the second um, very important step, and here I would like to congratulate all co-authors and co-actors, is that we were granted the EU Horizon 2020 grant for hypothermia. And the title is Hypothermia Boosting the Effect of Radiotherapy. I'll give you one more slide afterwards. And the coordinator um, in, for this major effort was Hans Kriesi. And with what is also an achievement, I think, for ESPRO 21, for the probably first time, we have a scientific session, and it's a plenary session jointly with JASTRO, the Japanese Association of Radiation Oncology, entitled Current Status of Hypothermia and Radiation Oncology. I'm very happy to co-chair this with my Japanese colleagues. Next slide. So this is the setup of this um, hypothermia symposium. You see the titles, you see the focus, which we did, um, a little bit of history and bio biological rational by Jens Overgaard, Hans Greasy with the clinical heat heating techniques, the thermometry and QA, then the status of clinical hypothermia in Japan, important, you know, to open the horizon, not to focus on Europe alone. Then Zeko Ruyaskovic, who will speak about his evidence and potential indications, mainly on proton therapy and hypothermia in the US and conclusion by the current acting president of Estro, Ben Slotman. So next slide, and this is almost to conclude. Again, quality assurance. Please um, take this home. If you don't, you know, if you forget everything, it's probably the one and most important one. All of us, independent of the technology we use, independent of the methodology we use, we have to be committed to quality. And I think one option are these guidelines, these ESHA guidelines. There are many others, many others which are valid, I think. And the deep hypothermia uh, guidelines are now currently in revision and the new release is planned in 2021. And here I would like to thank the QA People Committee who is committed Maybe. to do this in the best possible way. Next slide. And these are the participating institutions, as you see, from all over Europe. And next slide. The focus here is uniquely train and equip early stage researcher with skills, with equipment to make a improvement of hypothermia, clinical hypothermia, clinical thermotherapy and oncology in the next generation. So it's getting insight in working mechanism of hypothermia, translational research, novel treatment planning models, multidisciplinary um, aspects of hypothermia, and expand the infrastructure um, within Europe. Next slide. So if we join forces, I think we can easily face the shark. We know that from childhood and we know it now. And I would like to thank you for attention and have a very last slide. What we need is quality and not quantity. Thank you very much. Thank you for attention. I'm happy to answer questions. And again, congratulations that you are here. Congratulations to the organizer.
Thank you, for Professor Bodies. It's really, really interesting. I think uh, your lecture is, is really important because we know that we have a lot of problems with the reimbursement, with, with knowledge trials, and, and I think we have to, to research much more and to, and to show our research, which is really, really good. So thank you. We have uh, one question from Pyrus. Um, I, I, I think you can turn off your turn on your microphone, please, and you can ask directly. Sure. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you very much, Stefan, for your nice presentation. Clear as always. Um, work from Aarau, Switzerland is much appreciated. Uh, I have a question, uh, more going into the details. When I look at the meta analysis, uh, sometimes there are different uh, uh, treatment methods combined, like annular phased array and capacitive, uh, for instance, for the cervical cancer meta-analysis, and uh, sometimes uh, also lower temperatures are documented uh, for the uh, capacitive devices, uh, gaining uh, similar effects. Um, for future trials, which we, I think, urgently need, uh, would you, uh, think it could be an option to co combine different uh, treatment methods in one trial? Or is that, do you think this is possible maybe also in locations where temperature measurements are less uh, possible in the abdomen, for instance? Thank you very much, Piers, for this um, important question. I make a very brief answer and then a lengthy one. Brief, yes, I think it should be possible if the trial is large enough and if you can stratify according to the technology and bundle these centers in a stratification. In a more lengthy answer, I think it has a lot of pros and cons. The ideal world we will never have, you know, one patient cohort, one technology, one clear read out because all patients have the same tumor stage. So we all always face these challenges to look to find an optimum between quality and the needed quantity. And I think the more patients we have, the more centers we will participate, the better will be the outcome, whatever the method will be. And I think there is more room for variety also to include almost all um, technology if we have a large enough trial. This of course needs to be discussed in detail with statistical experts and experts as you and others in the field of hypothermia. Is this okay for the moment? Thank you very much. Thank you. We have uh, another question. I think we, we need a short answer because of the time. And is uh, Tatiana Romanic? Uh, maybe she wants to ask it. Tatiana, are you there? Yes, I just, I had to, I had to unmute. Hello. Um, I'm Tatiana Romanik from the Netherlands and uh, I opened uh, a hyperthermia clinic, actually a clinic um, to boost uh, also um, uh, to, to help with uh, nutrition and uh, everything around it, sort of supportive care. Um, and here in the Netherlands, it's actually, it's quite difficult because it's not yet part of standard treatment. So I was actually wondering um, in what countries in Europe is it, is hyperthermia already part of standard treatment? Um, what is then defined as standard treatment? Is that chemotherapy and or um, uh, radiation? Um, and um, I would very much like to obviously to also to get there that it's going to be integrated in the oncology um, uh, treatment um, um, route for every patient. So what did you do in those countries? So what can I learn from you to actually to take this up, this quest in the Netherlands? Okay, this is a full, you know, dinner discussion. And for the sake of time, I try to be as brief as possible. Thank Hela you. van Roon in Rotterdam and Hans Kries in Amsterdam, they actually compiled this data also as we did for the Swiss authorities. And what you see in a short answer is that in most of the countries, there are still some restrictions. So it's not just reimbursed, but there are some conditions. And I just tell you for Switzerland for the moment, for all indications which are now reimbursed, which are 11, always in combination with radiotherapy and always in well-defined indications, both curative and palliative, what we need is to present a patient at the tumor board. And the tumor board must be documented and the decision of the tumor board must be, yes, the decision is that hypothermia should be part of this treatment. 
that's probably a relevant message for you at the moment. Okay, thank you. Most welcome. Thank you, thank you. So very interesting. So thank you for the discussion.